thank everyone for joining us. Um, we coming off we're coming off two hard losses at Arkansas State against a very good team. Coach Pilato did a great job of getting his guys ready to play. They had good energy. Um, we were excited to have Coach Marlin back. The players were ecstatic when he walked in the door on Wednesday for practice. Um, you know, ultimately, I think we experienced being on the road against a team that played really well. Um, I thought we battled. We stuck together in adverse times. Ultimately, didn't come out on top. What we're telling our players at this point is your goals at the start of the year to win the Sun Belt are still available to you. They're going to take determination. They're going to take grit, toughness. We're going to have to do our job, and we can only take it one game at a time. But they're still available. And I think that's the most important thing for us as we go into this week against a rival in ULM. Coach Marlin's not here today um, due to the fact that he needed to go follow up checkups with his doctor um, due to the COVID diagnosis. It kept him out for 10 days. When he returned, we left on Thursday to go on the road trip to Arkansas State, and therefore this is his first available day to do that. Um, and that's why he was not able to be with you guys this morning. So if there's any questions, um, we'll take those now. Brock, was it just uh, as simple as Arkansas State just shot it real well this weekend? Yes, that's the simple answer. Their bench was 11 or six for 11 from three each night. So I think that is a very simple answer if you want to put a statistical category on it. Um, I think there was also some youth that needed to grow with Brayan being absent in the second half of the first game and also missing the entire second game. I think we had to find new roles and get comfortable in those roles. And that has taken, that took us a little time and we got probably down too big before we kind of figured that out. What is uh, Brian's status going forward, uh, Brock? Yeah, right now it's just day to day. Um, it's kind of been that way for a while. Um, he, he's been in and out of practice, has done a great job of coming in games. And I think it was evident this weekend that what he brings to our team's not always uh, statistically correlated. I think you see the leadership and the toughness and the ability to really rally the troops, get guys to play together. And some of those things don't always show up. So does he just keep re-aggravating it when he does play or what's the situation there? Yeah, you know, there's not an exact um, understanding to my knowledge. Now, I'm not honestly in all of those meetings um, with BJ and our doctors, but basically it's a re-aggravation is my understanding. Um, there probably needs to be some things go on in the off season that, you know, hopefully that doesn't have to happen sooner rather than later. We'll see. Um, but at this point, it's just about managing the pain and, and, and trying to get him to the court if at all possible. So what is the adjustment when he's out? How did the role shift? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because our point guard position, you know, with, with Brayan and Trajan out, um, is it goes to one of probably three players, maybe four, that their best attributes are probably scoring the ball and attacking the rim, where Brayan and Trajan were more facilitators, could set guys up. Uh, I thought Brayan could probably do both uh, fully healthy. So you've got Cedric, Malik, Ty Harper, Mike Thomas. Um, one of those four has got to take the team, take the role. I think right now you're probably looking at what we did on Saturday night was Malik and Cedric took that dual role. Malik probably being more of the point guard so Cedric could get some, some looks off the ball as well since he's shooting the ball so well. And I think that's what we're going to be diagnosing as we go forward, who gives us the best chance to win at that lead guard spot. And what about like what you do with that extra spot? I know you had butts in there. Or do you, is it just kind of mix and match and over the next few games and try and find the right combinations when he's uh, when when Brain's not available? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think what we did on Saturday was we just went next man up. So Devin had been our first guard sub off the bench. So we just went with that since it was such a quick turnaround. You know, this week in practice, you've got a little bit more of an opportunity to create some competition. Somebody needs to go earn that role. Somebody needs to earn 
the first guard off the bench role. And I think this time of the year, you know, maybe some guys that haven't played quite as much need to look at that as an opportunity to come to practice and compete. And I think it's a little bit more open at this point than it was just on a quick one night turnaround. Um, it seems like uh, Isaiah's minutes are kind of all over the board. Is that just, you know, situational, depending on matchups and, um, you know, who else is doing what and what foul situations are and who's hot or what, what's what's behind all that? That's a great question. Um, it's, an, it's a good maybe problem to have, so to speak, that I think we've got probably the best center in the league in Theo. Um, and I think – you could make an argument that Isaiah is one of the top freshmen in, in the league at that position. So Friday night, for instance, Isaiah is 10 and seven. Theo's obviously been a dominant force all year. So where do you find those minutes? Dugay goes for, I think it was 24 and 14 on Thursday or on Friday. So you've got a little bit of a log jam in that, in those two forward positions. And that's where Isaiah's figuring out how to, um, gain minutes, earn minutes. We're figuring out, you know, what's the balance. And, um, you know, I think that's tough sometimes for freshmen. Their roles aren't always as defined as, as they would like for it to be, and they have to figure out how to create value for themselves and for our team. Isaiah's done a nice job of that for the most part, and I think I could see a lot of improvement moving forward. Coach, uh, I, I don't think – I think we can kind of say now whether you believe – believe in this term or not, that Malik's in what we would call a sophomore slump. I mean, he, he, his, his field goal percentage just continues to struggle. So is he in a better position maybe to, to just play point guard? I mean, to, to, to not worry about being a scorer as much and just be the point guard? Yeah, that's a really good question as well. Um, I, I, I personally stay away from um, those taglines. I think that Malik has gained the respect of a lot of people in our league. He was probably higher on the scouting report this year than maybe going into the year last year. Um, I think he also needs to just get back to doing what Malik does, and that's attacking the rim, rebounding the ball, playing good defense, getting a steal here or there. Um, I think we saw a flash of that, to be honest with you, in the second half against Arkansas State on Saturday, and maybe it was the position change. You know, that's a little bit harder to answer. But I think more so it's about what do you do when you're on the court, no matter the position you play. Um, and I think that's a learning curve a little bit for all players is you come in unknown, kind of get to just play. People start figuring out what you do well, what you don't do as well. So they force you to do the not as well things. And now Malik's figuring out, hey, how do I get back to doing what I do well, even though they're trying to take that away? And that's, that's a hard, complicated thing for a sophomore in college to figure out. He's also trying to play within the system with a lot of talented players. Um, and, and I think Malik's done a good job of that. So maybe, maybe so. Maybe the position changed back to the point to where he can facilitate and he can just play. That would help him uh, do what he does best. What was, uh, Brock, what was the situation the other night with the, with the delay and all of that and whoever you had that was sick and then no positive test? Give the whole background on that. Yeah, and I'll stay away from names just for the medical okay. side of things. But we had a player who went off the court um, and was experiencing some nausea uh, and possibly a headache, which in, in this COVID world we're in, you know, we have to take precautions. And I thought BJ did a – our trainer, athletic trainer, did a phenomenal job of a, identifying a potential risk. He worked closely with their doctors and their athletic trainer. They decided that a COVID test would need to be done to ensure that it either was or wasn't um, the cause. So because of that, coming out of halftime, there was a slight delay just to get that information. Um, once it was confirmed it was not COVID, then we were free to play. So all the time was, was just waiting on the test to, to confirm or deny. And are you guys COVID free at this point now? Or what's what's yeah, we are. And, and I think that's a point. I know coaches made this point a lot, but I can tell you as an assistant, uh, you know, from the inside, you, you're constantly trying to uh, talk to our players about being responsible. I think a lot of credit goes to our players uh, for being responsible. It, it's, as we all know, it's not easy. 
um, that something's out of your control. But they've done a very good job this year controlling what they can. What about the unusual schedule this weekend after, I don't know if you could say y'all have gotten used to this new schedule, but it's, it, y'all have done it for a month or so now. So what about, how, what kind of impact could that have? I don't think it'll have a ton of impact. Um, it might be good to have a day off to rest because I can tell you the back-to-backs are somewhat, you know, difficult on everyone's body. Um, the travel might be the interesting part, you know, because we've been staying and, and a lot of these new guys in our program haven't had to travel in between games. So that's going to be relatively new to them. Um, but at the end of the day, that, that stuff, we, we tell our players all the time, that is what it is. There's nothing you can do about it. So play the game in front of you, get on a bus, drive to ULM, play the game on Saturday. So we're, we're not going to really worry about that at all. Got time for one more. And ULM this year, they've they've struggled a bit. But um, what do you have to guard against when, when facing them this week? Well, when they win, they shoot 45% from three. Okay. And when they lose, I think it's around 31%. So, obviously, their three-point field goal percentage is going to be critical. They really, really guard. Um, you know, their record doesn't reflect how good they are, in my opinion, especially in a rivalry game. And we're going to have to be able to score the basketball. We're going to have to defend the three. And ultimately, and it's like we told our team this week, look, if you want to achieve the goals that you've set out to, that you've put yourself in a position to do with three weeks left, then we're going to respect everyone and fear no one. And we're going to work on us. We're going to come this week to practice and try to handle business on Thursday. That's our ultimate goal. ULM's a good team. They're very capable. And we've got to go play well to win.